Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here is a new African themed DLC for Age of Empires 3 that just came out. And for this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the new civilizations, the Ethiopians. Now, I don't play AoE 3 all that often, and I'm pretty terrible at the game, but I know some people like the crossover and variety. Just keep in mind, this is probably only going to be helpful for you if you're quite new to the game. Maybe somewhat related to that, last time I played AoE 3 on the channel, I got some feedback it was sometimes hard to follow what was going on. AoE 3 is a very fast paced game, and every civilization is also quite unique. So if you haven't played a Civ for yourself before, it can be kind of hard to follow what's going on and why different things are happening. To help out, and because this is a brand new Civ, I thought we'd go through the Ethiopians first and their specific game mechanics, and then I'll play a quick game, probably just against the AI, so you can see them in action. Now, the first thing we're always going to do as Ethiopians is place the livestock market, and our villagers are just going to start collecting from a cow to give us some food income to make more villagers. We have four other cattle, and you might think we're going to eat them next, but they're actually going to generate everything for us except food. We're going to garrison them into the livestock market, and over time they're going to fatten up and increase the amount of food they have. That drives up their price at the market, and you can see the current price that you can sell one for at any time, whether that be for wood or coin. Let's say I want to build a house, but I don't have enough wood. Well, I can just sell a cow and get the resources I need instantly. The longer I put that off and the less often I do it, the more resources I'm going to get. You can also buy a new, very scrawny cow for 100 coin. So if the selling price is say 300 coin per cow, I can sell one and then buy three more, or just pocket some of the extra coin as a profit. It's almost like a market mini game where you buy and hold cows as they fatten up in order to flip them for more resources later. Now at first I thought this sounded like extra work and something new to manage, but to offset that they've simplified another part of the Ethiopian economy. If you're as terrible at the game as I am or you're coming from age 2, you know that gathering from hunts is one of the more difficult things to learn. Every time you take an animal the whole herd runs away, so over time your villagers end up wandering across the map and they're hard to keep track of. I know you're supposed to try to push the hunt toward your town center, but it's just one more thing to remember and take some extra attention. One of the reasons I think the new civs are actually a little easier to play is they have a building called the Granary that attracts nearby hunts toward it. It takes a minute to get the whole herd to come in, but the herd will stay in the same place over time, and your villagers even get a slight boost to their collection rate from being beside it. Basically, you can just place a granary in the middle of a big herd and put your attention elsewhere, like on your explorer or your livestock market. Another new mechanic worth mentioning is the influence system. Influence is a resource for the two new sieves, and it's passively generated by your cattle at a livestock market, though you can also get more with home shipments or you can mine it. Ethiopians have a unique building called the Mountain Monastery, which you can build on top of a mine so that a certain percentage of your mining income is paid in influence instead of coin. You can do 50-50, 75% coin, 25% influence, or 100% coin, and can change it at any time. Now, in my admittedly limited experience, I find that influence doesn't help too much in the early game. You can use it to train your equivalent of Minutemen from houses, but they're generally for emergencies only, as they lose health over time. I find influence is only really useful after you reach the third age, and definitely useful in the fourth age. You can start to accumulate it early though if you want. Now, one downside to mining it is that the mine will run out, in which case you'll need to build a new one and there is some hassle involved with that. It takes some extra attention and they run out far enough into the game that you often have a lot of things going on at the same time. To get a bit better idea of this coin versus influence trade-off, it'll help to take a look at their military buildings. They have the Watchtower, War Hut, Native Embassy, and the Palace. The Watchtower and War Hut I think of as training Ethiopians' native warriors. The Watchtower has an anti-cavalry, anti-infantry, and an anti-building unit, so you have enough variety that you could just stick with that. I do find when I go with the Watchtower though as a primary military building first, I end up being housed quite a bit, as the units take more than one pop space to create, so there's a hidden wood cost to all those units. The Desert Raider though is quite nice to have as a threat against buildings, and having a defensive tower early might be something that appeals to you. Their war camp has a variety of cavalry and infantry with a bunch of different specialties. An important one to keep in mind is that their Gaskenya is their only locally grown unit that doesn't cost any gold. Now, influence, on the other hand, you can think of as foreign currency to hire soldiers from abroad. Everything at the palace and native embassy only cost influence to train. The exact units you have access to actually changes depending on which nations you ally with as you age up. If you ally with certain nations, you'll also get buildings, like Portuguese and an arsenal that gives upgrades you can't normally have access to. And all of these things cost influence. It really helps to think of influence as money you use to buy foreign techs and units in the late game, if you want things like cannons, conquistadors, or elephants. 
Obviously, there's a lot of nuance and details I haven't covered, and we haven't talked about home shipment cards or specific allies, but at this point, we've covered the basics. Hunting feels much easier than before with the granary keeping the hunt in place, you have the livestock market to get instant wood and gold by selling cattle, you have the mountain monastery to generate influence at the expense of coin, and then the balance between what I see as two categories of military buildings, depending on how much you want to focus on generating influence. But now let's jump into a game, where if you're under the impression I actually know what I'm talking about, we can quickly correct that misconception. Let's check it out. All right, so I got a game set up, and I'm gonna go with Hardest AI. I kind of thought about trying Extreme, but I don't wanna go all try hard in this video while I'm also trying to explain what I'm doing. Painted Desert, okay, I know nothing about this map. Uh, if it's not Great Plains, I don't know what it is. First thing, gonna put that down, put these guys over here. And let's see what we got. Lots of hunts around, at least. Oh, I've got two of these. Oh no, <laughs> that was the same one. Okay, got confused there for a sec. Alright, I think I'm gonna send the next guy here. I just don't know which direction. I guess this seems a little further back, so we'll do that. Not seeing any treasures. Actually, no trade route either. That's interesting. And these guys will actually automatically garrison themselves if they're close enough, but I always like to just make sure. And over here, one kind of annoying thing, if I have them attack this, these will all run away the other direction and they might be out of range. So for the first one, it's good to shoot them towards it. But then after that, they should just automatically hang out there and they shouldn't be able to get away. And just make sure that he doesn't shoot them away the other direction quite yet. Yes, and I got another cow. Perfect. We'll add it to our growing collection. There's a lot of hunt on this map. Uh, the treasure I really want. I don't really care about coin. I suppose I could fight these guys to see where all the treasures are. That might be a good idea. But actually, nah, I'd rather just go get them. Okay, again, I don't really care about coin. It's food that I really want. That's all I need to go up is food right now. And to the point that... Uh, no, again, I don't really care. Uh, we gotta sell this at some point. And houses I always like to put in the front, because remember, that's where uh, our emergency units come out of. Okay, and we'll go with the land deck. Why can I not send these? Because I don't have housing right. There we go. Man, I still really need food. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I might want to send one of these guys out to kind of herd this back. It's not that you don't have to manage your herd at all, but it's just a lot less than normal. Okay, any point, maybe I'll sell one of these and buy two more. It was over 200. And so this is my cool explorer effect, is he has the two of them fight each other. Then you can just kind of do damage to each. Got him. Barely took any damage from that. And got my food, so that's perfect. All my villagers come out, and I get one of these guys. He can build a mountain monastery, but I never use him that way. We should be going up, I think, after this villager. Uh, instead, I just use him to explore. Yeah, so when we go up, uh, I kind of like this one, because you get the extra camp. But, uh, I mean, idle just a little bit here. I guess I could buy. No, I can't. I guess we could sell. Buy. <laughs> That's kind of wasted to end up with a hundred extra anyway. Wish I found one more uh, food treasure. That's all I needed. All right, some of these guys. I probably don't need all of them here. We'll make another house. Again, the house is where I can get my emergency units from. And maybe we'll preemptively build this here. This is a good spot. I can get, actually get both hunts on this. And I think I'm gonna have to tower this in case he rushes me there. And food? No. Okay, so I don't really care. Although I don't care as much about food now. I actually prefer wood. Let's grab some gold here. Uh, I'm just gonna send the three villagers again. I don't have any amazing card to send at the beginning of the next stage, except maybe two military buildings. 
but I should already be getting a builder with that uh, when I age up. Oh no, see, they did the thing they weren't supposed to do. Here, put a couple more on wood. Because I don't want them to get too far, because now they're probably out of range of that. So I gotta help them back just a little bit. I think I'll do more on gold. Wow, he must have gotten a lot of treasures. I guess we can go up here. <laughs> okay, so first we can put a mountain monastery down. I get that one for free. And the tower. Hmm, I actually really don't know between the tower defending my base or defend these guys. I think I have to defend these guys. I'll try to herd them back a little bit that way until they get picked up by this thing. Should probably do that. Should probably... That's a lot of wood. Get some upgrades. My new villagers, put them on here. And I think this guy also collects. So he can build them and he can also collect from them, but otherwise... Uh, they're not super useful. Here's I'll send this guy back to. And reason I'm going really heavily onto gold now. In fact, I'm not even sure I want influence. I think I want all gold. It's because I have a tower. And towers are very gold intensive units. And also house intensive units. Nope. I cannot build that. There we go. Uh, okay, I'm going to start with archers. They're good against infantry, and I'm against Incas, so I think that would be a good call. Oh, nice. Perfect. So these guys are all hanging out there. And I don't think I have any upgrades there I really need. This is 15%. I can definitely afford that. I need to start spending resources. And you're all there. Perfect. And next, I probably will go for this, unless I've got something... I think we're going to have to go for that, because I think I'm under attack now. Hmm. Okay, well, time to make a couple of panic units, I think. Uh -oh. Alright, we're just going to hide everybody. Kind of a rough attack. But this happens with the hardest AI sometimes. Is it ages up and attacks quite quickly. Maybe it was a little bit too greedy there at a couple of points. Okay, and also misplace my tower, I think. So uh, I get some more of these guys. And what are you? Aren't you good against... Oh, we gotta be really careful we don't lose these. Okay, so that should give us two towers. I think we can recover, probably. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, this does kind of slow down my economy a lot, though. Maybe I won't lose my scout for nothing. Now they're attacking me on that side. Okay. Away from my tower. That's kind of annoying. You weren't supposed to do it that way. Alright, I think I need some emergency units here. Still seeing a lot of what I would call infantry. So, I'll send some over there, some over there. And that one's actually pretty much used up. So, let's see. Okay, this is a nice one. And he hasn't seen that side yet. Oh man, he actually got one of my one of my guys there. I think we can probably fight him. There we go. Alright, we're gonna have to go down there. And I'm feeling have a little a little pressured right now. So let's see if we can do anything about that. I don't really have a ton of resources. Okay, and I need houses. Again, because I have towers. And I need a lot of houses. And I gotta sell some of these. I mean, I love these for rebalancing your economy like that. I was gonna make, though. Archers, I suppose. Uh oh, that's not good. Why don't we get the thing that makes my villager stronger? Okay, so you need to go up here. Oh, so they scare it even further away. Whoops. And he's scaring it away too. Alright, let's go put all these on a control group. Yay. 
All right, what next? Maybe a couple military buildings. I think I need some extra villagers. Gonna make up for a little bit weaker economy. Uh, you, I would rather you just get gold. You can get gold, or actually houses. Make a house wall. I don't know if they can actually sneak in between us or not. Okay, I might be able to catch him on a hunt here. That would be good. If I could get like, you know, five villagers, I would feel a lot more in this game. What is going on here? I think we just need to build some more of these. <laughs> okay, I tried to get a couple hunts there, and I think I just ended up scaring both of them in opposite directions. See, I don't know between these archers that he's got and mine, whose archers are better. Uh-oh, he just scouted me out. Why don't we make a tower? Can I even... How much are they? Okay, I need more wood. Yeah, I actually don't need as much food as I have, so let's do a little rebalancing. What are you guys doing? The Yen Spearman? I don't see a reason to not make my archers at this point. Uh, in fact, let's make a war hut so we can have show off some slightly different units. Sure. Alright, so Spearman, again, not really worried about that because I'm not making any cavalry. Although, mental note, not to load up on cavalry. And more food, I guess. More wood is actually what I'm really short on. Oh, these guys seem kind of strong. Alright, back. And what have we got this good against infantry? I think this might be heavy infantry, though. Another oh, shock infantry, so that means they're light. I don't know. But these guys are, it says they're good against light infantry. So I'm seeing a lot of that. And if I start seeing macemen or whatever, then I'll start switching to javelin rider. Oops. How much have I got? Okay, that's not quite balanced. Maybe we should get some more gold. And we have nobody taking this hunt. Interesting. Why don't we do that and we'll pick up that wood. Oh, what are you? You're really fast, that's what you are. Yeah, I don't want to fight out of the town center, but I like this position. Yeah, I hate to fight this and then everybody gets snared or whatever. Oh, let's connect those. We got a shipment coming, right? Oh, shoot, I missed that. Okay, what are these guys good against? Cavalry. Well, that's not going to be too helpful. I think I need to make them anyway, though. Just because my economy is so bad. The villager line of sight. Hmm. Alright, what have I got? And send these guys if I had more influence, but I don't. Okay, yeah, we'll make a fortress. And I should probably start thinking about going up to the next stage here. I think I have too much on wood now. Why don't we make a few? I'll just start using this. I need more gold, actually. That's what I really need. Oh, because my gold thing ran out. And this is why I don't like these, is I don't feel like I got a... Whoops. I don't feel like I got a notification for that. I feel like it just ran out. Uh-oh. What are these? Okay, well, he's pressuring me over here. Luckily, right below a tower. Yeah, this is a much better unit composition, I think. I don't know if we can actually handle this. Why don't we make a few of these? Yeah, I'm starting to get too many resources going. Yeah, I'm 
Let's make some raiders so we have a little bit of a threat against buildings. And I like these guys to be working out okay. Uh oh. Well, this is why... You know, I feel like I've upgraded these villagers quite a bit, and they're not doing that much damage yet. Uh oh, if I lose this tower, that might be bad. Why don't we build a couple more? Yeah, I need that gold <laughs> more than I need to kill this guy here. Oh, I gotta be careful. I keep doing my select all button. But I gotta be careful because that starts sending my guys. That starts bringing all my defenses up here to the other side of the fight. Maybe that's okay now, though. What are you? Oh, you're my fortress. Perfect. I think we should do the fortress somewhere. I mean, he's really focusing up here. Maybe we just do that. And this is a pretty nice hunt that I want to protect. So that's a lot of protection, but this is also a lot of a lot of those. How much is repairing? Not bad. Let's try that. Oh, he's got his conscience, right? Yeah, this is such a nice hunt. This must have been two of them that I grabbed together. And we should be advancing here at some point. We're just not really close to that quite yet. Okay, let's see. Two more military. Uh, I could. Well, let's send some units. Let's do our big push right now. And we'll get some of these guys. And let's get some of these guys. Because a little low on gold at the moment. Even though I shouldn't be. I feel like I have lots on gold. I think they're even getting a little boost by being beside this thing. Alright, he's in trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That was looking a little dicey there. Mm, I don't really want to get him. Because he's the only thing I can buy from the palace in this age. And speaking of which, I should age up here pretty soon. But he loses hit points over time. I'm just not a big fan of that type of unit. For obvious reasons. Alright, I haven't really been using this as much as I should be. And you... Oh, and he surrendered just like that. Okay. Huh, I don't really know what made that swing so quickly, because I feel like he was pretty close and putting a lot of pressure. But for whatever reason, just going to his base, I assumed he had way more. And had a bunch of buildings on this side, but he really didn't, so... Hmm. I can see I, I like making these little bases where you have like these give you like a central point you're like I know my villagers are going to stay right here they're going to collect from the animals so I can put a tower some military buildings and some house or some houses that can create instant units if I really really need them and I'm going to spend influence for that but it also makes your villagers kind of sitting targets if you don't do that although <laughs> this is really nice I still barely I uh, started taking that hunt too. So I feel like I was in a pretty good position there. I don't think he was going to be able to raid that. This thing has a pretty good range. I was pretty close to aging up. In which case, uh, the next thing I would have done is... I probably just would have made the same units. But when you upgrade these, it's nice because you just get one upgrade for all your infantry. And then all three of these are upgraded. Or you do this one, both of these are upgraded. So it's pretty streamlined to get uh, your upgrades at the beginning of the next stage. You kind of feel like you don't have as many upgrades as you might otherwise have. All right, let's take a look at the post game here. Yeah, they always get so much food from their Comcha houses. And a lot of coin, and yet I needed more. That's kind of the watchtowers, though. They, Yeah, you got to be careful because they you get a lot of units because they cost very little food, and they're a ton of coin. <laughs> Eight treasures. Yeah, I didn't do a very good job. Okay, nice, good ratio. And things were pretty dicey there. I, yeah, I don't know, that was, that could have gone either way. You can't always trust score, although this is the unit count. What does the score say? Okay, the score says I was fine the whole way. I don't know, I actually think unit count is a better indicator of where things are at. And then once you start killing the villagers, like, that's, that's it. Over. 
So it's obviously not the highest level of gameplay, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that little introduction to the Ethiopians and a bit of Age of Empires 3. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do one for the Hausa. I guess it kind of depends what you guys think of this kind of thing. But that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.